In today's video, we are going to be talking about these, some CAN bus servos from Hi-Tech. Now, in this video, I'm going to give you guys an overview of these CAN based servos that they've sent me to have a play with. I'm then going to walk you through configuring these for UAV CAN on Ardrapilot. And I'm going to take you through setting the servo up, talk about the wiring, talk about connecting it to your autopilot, and then walk you through the actual settings on the servo itself for making sure that it's configured properly and then the settings within Mission Planner and Ardra Pilot to actually configure it so your servo output goes to CAN bus rather than just PWM. Now just before I get into it I want to say a massive thank you to High Tech. I would not have been able to make this video without their support. They have very kindly sent me these servos over to have a play with. They haven't asked me to make this video or sponsored it. I actually reached out to them because I was really interested in putting a video out on this subject and they very kindly sent me these ones over to have a play with. Now the first thing we're going to do is take a closer look at the servos itself that they've sent then we'll jump into the configuration and walk you through that. Taking a closer look at the MD70MH from Hi-Tech, this is a 12mm Metal Gear standard servo. It features a built-in 32-bit programmable digital circuit that gives you a wide range of programmable options including endpoint adjustment, direction, failsafe and dead bands. It features a built-in magnetic position encoder and has a wide operating voltage range of 4.8 to 7.4 volt. It has heavy duty long life motors and is IP65 rated as well. Now this is a multi protocol servo and it supports CAN bus 2.0a and 2.0b, UAV CAN, RS485, PWM and TLL. Now because this is a multi-protocol servo it is programmable via high-tech USB adapter and I'll show you this a little bit more later on in the video. Now as you can see these servos have a huge amount of capability and it actually needs to be programmed to tell it what we want it to do in the sense of what protocol we want to communicate on. Now to do this you actually need a little adapter which is this one here from high tech and it's actually called the dpc can and this is what is used to actually configure the servo to allow it to communicate over the desired bus that we want so we want to set it to uav can and it also allows us to configure various other options in the servo including endpoints and other things like that too now alongside this you will also need the software to configure the servo as well and that comes from high tech and if you don't have it you'll need to contact them to get hold of a copy now what we're going to do next is walk through actually connecting the servo up to the adapter, connecting it to the PC and configuring it for UAV CAN mode. And I'm going to show you what settings you need to actually use it with Ardrapilot. Now I'm going to be using it on a Cube Purple, but any Ardrapilot build craft will be the same. Now, before you connect this up, something else you just need to be aware of is when using the servo with this adapter, you do need to have a BEC to power the servo. This adapter will not power the servo off USB and you will need an external power supply so I'm simply using a traditional 5 volt BEC to be able to power the servo whilst I'm doing the configuration. Now to actually do this we will simply take the cable from the servo and plug it in on the adapter. Now on the back it has actually all of the pinouts in place so you can make sure you get it right. So simply looking at the back we want the can high and low. So the can colours on the wiring is the yellow and green. So we can plug that into there. And then we just need to make sure that we have our BEC connected to be able to power the servo as well. And then we will simply plug that in like that. Finally, once we've done that, we can then take our USB cable, which I've got next to me here, plug that in and then power the servo with the BEC to make sure that it's actually getting the power supply. And then we can open the software and actually do the configuration. So I've now got the servo connected on USB and we're going to open the software from Hi-Tech. Now, once we open this, the first thing we need to do is to connect to the COM port. Now, as I've got it in USB, on mine, it's listed under COM3. So we're going to simply click COM3, click open, and then we're going to click auto scan, which will do the full connection to the servo. Now this software offers a massive amount of configuration options. In here, we will set how we want it to communicate with the autopilot over CAN, its node ID, its servo IDs. We can test the servo from within this software, as well as do all the configuration options such as speed and torque and everything like that. Now what I'm going to concentrate on is doing the setup for UAV CAN. Now to do this, we need to set three or four things, two specifically. The first 
is the node ID and that is telling the servo what canvas node to talk to. That needs to be set the same as your autopilot. So for mine on Ardrapilot, the node ID is 10. So we need to set the node ID for the servo to 10 as well. Next, we need to tell it it's servo ID and this is basically the servo number. So if we wanted it to be servo one, the node I the servo ID, sorry, should be one. If we wanted it to be servo two, we would set the servo ID to number two. We need to turn on something called streaming mode, which allows it to communicate with the autopilot. And I'll show that a little bit more in a minute, as well as set the configuration for that as well. Now to configure this, we simply go onto this software and over here, we want to click can ID, node ID, servo ID, stream mode and stream time. We then set the can node ID to number 10 which is the same as what it is on my autopilot. We will click set. We set the servo ID to number one because we want it to be servo number one. Click set. Under stream mode, you want to turn that on. And stream mode is what basically gives Ardra Pilot the feedback from the servo, including the servo positioning data and the communication data as well. So we want to turn that on and we want to set the stream to 50 and click set. Once you've done those four things, the next thing to do then is go down to here and click save and apply. And that saves the settings to the servo to allow it to communicate with Ardra Pilot. Now, as I have already said, there is a huge amount in here. If we shift over to some of the other boxes, we've got the PID settings, smart sensing, options, modes, status, and option two as well. Then down here, we've got all of the options to test the servo too. So for instance, if I just click auto scan, if I actually pick the servo up and hold him there, you'll see if I go left, the servo go left, center, right. We can set the end points. We can read the position back off the servo as well. So there's a huge amount of configuration options available within this software, and it allows you to pretty much set the servo to whatever you need it to do. Now that we've done the CAN configuration, the next thing we need to do is hook it up to Ardra Pilot and then configure Ardra Pilot to actually tell it to move the servos over CAN bus. Now we're going to do this, as I've already said, with a cube purple on a standard carrier board, but the process is the same no matter what autopilot you're using. But there is some very specific things that we do need to configure and we're going to take a look at them now. Before we move into Mission Planner and Ardra Pilot, I just want to talk about connecting this up to the autopilot because there are some things you need to be aware of there first. Now, when connecting the servo up, it has a completely different connection. So your option is either cut that off and put a normal JSTGH connection on, which is like on the cube, or you can use an adapter like I've got here. Now I've made that adapter up myself, so you may need to do a little bit of jiggering on the wiring. Now there is also something else you need to be aware of. Whilst the servo can be powered from the autopilot, it is not advised. The autopilot will not power the servo properly. And what you can find is the servo works for a couple of seconds and then stops working. And that is because it actually overloads the five volt regulators on the autopilot. Whilst using your CAM based devices, it is strongly advised that you use a BEC to power them. Now, this is actually shown on the Q Pilot poster and shows you actually that all of the CAM devices are powered separately. And whilst there is a five volt output on the CAM bus, don't rely on that to power your CAM devices. I would then use a BEC and use that to be able to power them separately. However, for the purpose of this, I am going to actually power it from this just to demonstrate it. But if you're using it in real world, make sure that you are actually powering it separately. So we now have Mission Planner connected to our autopilot and we need to do the configuration in Ardra Pilot. Now there's a few stages to this. The first thing we need to do is turn on the CAN ports on our autopilot. Some of them, they will be on a standard, some of them are not. So we're going to check that first. Now I have set the node ID on this to number 10 because I know 
that is what it is already as standard. You can try number 10 out the box and if it works, you're fine. However, if it isn't working, we'll take a look at how to check what that node ID is well in a minute too. The third piece of configuration is telling the autopilot to actually send servo commands over CAN bus rather than just to the PWM ports on the back. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure our CAM port is turned on. Now to do this, we're going to go into config. We're then going to go to the full parameters list and the simple way is to search for can underscore p and what we're then looking for is can underscore p1 driver and can underscore p2 driver now the p1 driver is the setting for the can one port and the p2 driver is the second setting for the second port so you need to make sure that if you're using can one can underscore p1 driver is set to number one if it's off it'll be set to zero if you're going to use can port two you need to use Canon score P2 driver. So both of these are on number one. We're going to make sure that's fine. Click right prams. Now, once you've done that, I would suggest rebooting the autopilot, connecting again before doing the other settings, because not all of the servo settings for Canvas appear until it's had a reboot after changing that setting. For me, I don't need to do that because it's already set. So the next thing you need to do after the reboot is tell the autopilot to send servo commands over Canvas. Now, as you've seen already, we've set the node ID to number 10, which is the same as my autopilot. I know it's number 10 because I've configured that already. 10 is the default as I know it in Audropilot. However, it is worth checking if you're having problems and we'll check it a little bit in a minute. Then we need to tell it to tell it what servo it is. And for that, we've set it to server one. So what we need to do is search for SRV underscore and what you're looking for is the bit mask pram for the can bus under servo so we'll wait for this to search and the one you're looking for is this top one here which is can underscore d1 underscore uc underscore serve underscore bit mask this is the option that sets what servo we want sent over canvas now if we click on the value it will bring up a box and here you have the option to tell it what servos you need to go over canvas as well as over pwm so for me it is just servo number one so if yours wasn't configured you would simply set it to servo number one click white palms and then reboot the autopilot. Now that is the main configuration done. Now that I've done that, if I move the autopilot, you can see that the servo is moving. Now, as you can see, it's now stopped. The reason that stopped is because I've actually overloaded the BEC on the autopilot and it's unable to provide any more power. If I actually disconnect it and reconnect it and then reconnect, I'll actually have it working again once it fires up give it a second there we go and you can see it's working but again be aware that when you are powering it off the autopilot it won't work forever it will stop because it's overloading the power if you power the servo externally it's absolutely fine now the reason i'm able to get this moving is because i've disabled all of the safety settings and features on the autopilot it is basically in a setting that it's putting the direct output to the servo without a safety switch and everything like that however in your use case it would be the normal ardra pilot setup and make sure you're armed and all of those things as well now just to check the configuration and show that the servo is actually communicating to do this you would need to go setup uav can and we're going to click on sl can mode can one now this will then allow us to actually communicate with the autopilot and have a look at the can bus itself and have a look at what's on there now sl can can be very temperamental in my experience sometimes it works absolutely fine sometimes it's a complete pain in the bum sometimes you're actually able to get it to work and as you can see on this one i have been able to so now i've clicked on the inspector you can see that the id 10 is come up that is my autopilot the id as i set at the start was 10 so if we then click down and you can see that the other device under it is the actuator, which is our Canvas servo. And you can see that it is actuator ID one byte, which is servo number one. We've then got the four settings, its current position, power and speed. Now, as 
I actually adjust this, you will see, if I actually turn the servo, you can't really do it because it's got power on it, but if I move this, you will see the information on the display act off in real time from the servo because it's got that feedback from the hall sensor. Now, obviously, I've overloaded the autopilot. However, if I move it by hand, oh, we've lost it completely now because it's disconnected. However, if it was on external power, we would have our communication. Now, this is how you check that the servo is showing up okay. What you should have is your node ID, number 10, which is for our autopilot, and then your servo should be listed below it. But remember, when you're doing the configuration, node ID of the cat servo must be the same as the autopilot. It needs to know who to listen to communications from. And that's basically what you're configuring it to do. Now, that is the main configuration done. It literally is turn on the canvas ports and tell Ardra Pilot to output your specific servo that you want to over Canvas. As long as you have configured the servo correctly in the high-tech software and you've then configured your autopilot correctly, it should just work. Now, if you do get problems at this point, it's then worth looking at are other servos working? Put a normal servo in place and make sure you're not having arming issues and all of the usual problems that you would get around it before concentrating on the CAN specific ones. Because the reality is, as long as the node ID is correct, as long as the wiring is correct and you've set the servo ID correct, it should just work once configured. Now, really, that is about it on this one. Now, I want to say a big thank you to High Tech for sending these over to me to have a play with to be able to make this video. I wouldn't have been able to do it without their support. Now, it is early days for CAN bus based servos and other devices. However, it is the future and it is the way forward. Some of the massive benefits are that you are able to use them as a node system, so you'd be able to daisy chain them rather than have individual wires. You can wire them in multiple parallels and it's the IDs that set the differences rather than actual independent wiring into the PWM bus. Now, it is, as I've said, worth mentioning that you do, though, need to set up the power specifically on these and you do need to set your system up in such a way that there is a proper power supply for the CAN bus rather than powering it off the autopilot itself. And if you do get issues like I've had where it moves for a little bit and stops, it's usually power related rather than a configuration issue. Now, that is it for this video. If you found it useful, please do let me know in the comments of the video. Please put any questions that you have in there, any comments, and please leave your feedback there for me too. Also, if you find this video interesting, please do check out my other ones on my Ardra Pilot builds. I've talked about the here, GPS and various other elements, my Rover Build 2. If you do find all of this interesting, please do then consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell as well. That way you will receive updates on any new videos like this that I release in the future. Again, a massive thank you to High Tech for sending these over to me to play with. Whilst they are not quite as straightforward to set up as PWM, there is a massive amount of benefits and options here with all of the configuration that you can do. And we're only going to see CAN-based devices expand and more and more applications for servos like this.